Hi there. The next option Greek that we're going to understand is gamma. All right. So uh, for fixed income, as we all know, that duration was the first order, you know, differentiation that we really learned, and then convexity is something that we learned later on. In the very same way, uh, we first understand about delta for options, and then we move uh, towards gamma. So what exactly is gamma? Gamma is the uh, change in delta for a given change in asset price. All right. So it is basically a second order differentiation that we are learning here. So what it means here is that delta was noticing the change in the option price vis-a-vis -vis the asset price. But gamma does what? Gamma changes the uh, gamma witnesses the change in the delta for a given change in asset price. So say for example, if uh, my current stock price is ten, all right, and that moves to twelve, and my delta moves from point five to point six. All right. So in that case, gamma witnesses this change. All right, the moment in delta. So delta is nothing but 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5 divided by 2. So that would be 0 0.1 divided by 2. All right, and that is how you can really calculate the value. It would be 0 .0, 0 0.05. So gamma witnesses this change. That what exactly is the change in delta itself? All right. So uh, we'll understand you know what values exactly gamma can really take and what is the uh, whether for call options it has a positive value or whether for put options it has a positive or a negative value, all those things you'll understand. All right. But the basic idea is it witnesses a change in the delta for a given change in asset price. So it is witnessing the change in delta divided by change in asset price. All right. Now let us understand things for call options. All right. So for call options, we know that given that if you're standing at the money, we have a delta of 0.5. We are stand, if for example, we are deep in the money. We can expect a delta around 1 and if we are deep out of the money, we can expect a delta of 0. All right. Now, say for example, if the stock price increases, all right, if the stock price increases. So when the stock price increases, we know that delta also starts to move towards 1. All right. For, from 0.5, delta will start moving towards 1 because we were standing at the money and since the option, uh, since the stock price is increasing, we'll start getting in the money. And since we're getting in the money, we'll be starting to move towards 1. And as we are moving towards 1, we'll see, you know, the delta will increase. So say, for example, uh, if the stock price has gone up from 10 to 12, all right, and the delta currently is 0.5, all right. So given that the stock price has risen, we'll definitely see a increase in delta as well, or an increase in delta as well. So if we see, if we calculate gamma here, we'll get a positive value. Why? 0.7 minus 0.5 divided by 12 minus 10. All right, so we'll see a positive value for gamma. All right, now let's notice what happens when we are, we are standing at the money and we uh, tend to go towards out of the money. So in that case, again, for at the money, we have a delta of 0.5. For out of the money, we have a delta of 0. All right, so given that if the stock price decreases, or let's say, for example, if it goes from 10 to 8, uh, the delta would move from 0.5 to 0.4, all right? It would, uh, the delta would move from 0.5 to 0.4 because we have a direct relationship of the delta with the stock price that we have already started. So here we'll see the value of gamma as 0.4 minus 0.5 divided by 8 minus 10 or divided by 8 minus 10. So how you, you'll, you'll really calculate it. 0.4 minus 0.5 is nothing but minus 0.1 divided by 8 minus 10 is nothing but minus 2. Negative negative gets cancelled out and you have 0.1 divided by 2 here. All right. So in either of the cases, when the stock price was increasing or the stock price was going down, we are able to see a gamma which is positive. All right. So that is something that we need to understand that gamma for call options, given that you're taking the long position here, all right, the position is also very much required to uh, uh, required to you know be known beforehand. So given that we are talking about gamma and we are, and we are talking about call options, we can here clearly see with examples that the gamma would always remain positive for somebody taking a long position. And now let's understand how it will work out for put option. So for put option, all right, I'll erase this part first and then we can, all right. Now let's discuss for put options. So for put options, we have a delta of minus 0.5 for add the money options, minus one for in the money options and zero for out of the money options. Now say for example, if the stock price is decreasing, all right, if the stock price is decreasing, the stock price is going down, all right, from 10 to eight, for example. So in that case, what we'll see here is, we'll see that our delta is also increasing in absolute terms, which what I mean here is it is move, it will move from minus 0.5 to minus 0.7. 
all right because as the stock price decreases the value of uh, value of put option increases all right and see here we are able to see that the value of put option or the delta of put option has gone from minus 0.5 to 0.7 and if we want to calculate the gamma here what will, what it will be it will be minus 0.7 minus minus 0.5 divided by 8 minus 10 so that would be minus 0.7 plus 0.5 divided by minus 2 that would be minus 0.2 divided by minus 2 so that would be 0.2 divided by 2 which is nothing but a positive number all right which is nothing but a positive number in the very same way say for example if the stock price increases all right if the stock price increases so how it will impact our gamma for put option is something that we need to understand if the stock price has gone from 10 to 12 for example all right if it has gone from 10 to 12 we know that this will uh, lead to reduction in the value for put option and since it is leading to reduction in the value of put option, uh, we will tend to move towards out of the money put option. And since we are moving towards out of the money put option, we will see the value of delta moving towards 0. All right. So we were standing at minus 0.5 first and we will start moving towards 0. So we will move towards say for example minus 0.3. All right. So again if we calculate the gamma here, it would be minus 0.3 minus minus 0.5 divided by 2, positive 2. All right. 12 minus 10. So here we can see that minus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.5 divided by 2. So here we will get the value is 0 0.2 divided by 2 which is nothing but say for example 0 0.1. So we can we are again able to see a positive gamma here. Alright so you need to understand that what really is happening here is given that you are standing at the money for at four put options if the stock price increases your delta will start moving towards zero and given that you are standing at the money for put options and if your stock price decreases you will start moving in the money for the put options all right and that is why you're able to see the gamma for both the call and put option to be on the positive side given that you're taking long positions all right so that is something that you need to understand uh, by the way gamma is uh, you know the highest for add the money options all right whether call or put given that you're standing at the money you'll see the highest value of gamma all right why because uh, the moment of delta would be highest from 0.5 towards this side or from 0.5 towards this side. Alright, so the change in delta would be highest given that you're standing at a delta of 0.5. Likewise for call option as well, if you're standing at a delta of 0.5, the moment in delta that you'll see would be the highest from 0.5 uh, towards 1 or from 0.5 towards 0. So that is something again that you need to understand because see the idea is very simple. Given that if you're standing deep in the money for call options, even if the stock price moves, you will not see a moment in the delta all right because you're deep in the money you will have a delta of one only and the, there is no moment in delta and since there is no moment in delta you will automatically have a very small gamma value in the very same way say for example if you're standing deep out of the money and given that you're standing deep out of the money we know that the delta is zero either for call or put option and even if the stock price moves then you will not be able to see a lot of moment in the delta why because you're deep out of the money already and your delta is towards zero but uh, and that is why if there is no moment in delta you'll automatically see there is no moment in gamma as well so that those are some basic things that you need to understand that given that you're standing at the money you will see the highest change in gamma compared to out of the money or in the money all right and for deep in the money or deep out of the money the moment in gamma would be the least all right so that is something that you need to understand and secondly what you need to understand or what you need to relate is how do you really calculate the value of call option or put option using both uh, delta and gamma all right so for that we have this formula it very much resonates to your previous formula of duration and convexity which you must have learned in your fixed income so change in call option is nothing but change in delta into stock price plus half into gamma into change in st uh, stock price ka square likewise change in put option is nothing but put delta into change in stock price plus half into gamma into change in stock price ka square so what you need to understand here is previously we were doing only this much formula all right previously we were only concerned with this much formula when we were studying delta only the first order is what we were considering and for put option we were considering only this bit all right see if i want to calculate the change in call option i simply have to multiply call delta by, uh, by change in stock price if i have to calculate the change in put price i simply have to multiply the put delta into change in stock price all right but since we have included the second order uh, here so what we need to do is we need to add that thing and figure out the complete change in call option and put option so this bit we studied earlier and now we have studied the entire bit where we can learn the entire change in call option or put option all right 
the delta part is you know we, we can learn uh, we can uh, notice the moment in the call price or the put price when there are you know when there is little moment and that little moment can be captured by delta as we used to do it in the case of duration uh, small moments in your you know bond was uh, very easily captured by duration but if there were larger moments then we wanted convexity in the very same way if there are small moments in your call option or put option that can be really captured by you know delta or the stock price for that matter any small moment in the stock price can be really captured by the delta and delta can tell you that how much it will affect the call option price or put option price but when we have large moments in our you know stock prices in that case merely delta is not sufficient to tell you how much change your call option or put option will see all right in that case you will need to have gamma so that is the whole idea of having this formula so that is the second option greek that we have understood that is gamma the third option greek that we have here is vega all right so vega is nothing but it uh, sees the relationship between the change in option price vis-a-vis -vis change in volatility all right so however the volatility is changing because of that the moment that you are able to see in the call option in the put option is something that is captured by vega and we know that volatility shares a positive relationship with call and put option because at the end of the day higher the volatility more will be uh, you know the likelihood for your call option or your put option to be in the money all right because the idea is simple right now the volatility is this much all right and your exercise price is this all right so uh, the uh, the likelihood uh, likelihood uh, for your option to be in the money is lesser but given that if the volatility is this high in that case you'll see a greater likelihood for your option to be in the money and therefore you'll be willing to pay a higher price either for a call option or a put option so that is something that you need to understand here that uh, vega is generally positive all right why because we are able to see a positive relationship of volatility with the call option or put option all right we can see it through a graph as well that uh, given that we take volatility on the x axis and call option value or put option value on the y axis we see a positive graph or a positive relationship here all right so vega tends to have uh, a positive number goes without saying and one more thing about vega is given that you are standing at the money vega tends to get larger all right given that if you are moving from out of the money to in the money to add the money or in the money to add the money at add the money position your vega tends to get larger that whenever you are moving towards add the money your vega will tend to get larger all right so what you need to understand in detail is about delta is about gamma and vega rho theta all these things will cover uh upar upar se but what you need to uh, understand is delta and gamma uh, in detail all right so in the next few videos we'll understand about rho about theta about uh, the other option greeks and then we'll understand the entire delta uh, neutral strategy and then i guess we'll be done with this chapter thank you